Hi there, privacy fans. My name is Mark Barnabas, your data protection pal, and here is updates on what's happening all over the world on privacy and cyber security. And the most important news that happening this week or fortnight rather is the news from China. You might have noticed that over the couple of months I've been talking about China and here we go. China has launched or reviewed their draft privacy protection law and there are 70 points in it and trust me I am reading it and I will promise to do a review on it as soon as I finish the entire document. Yes, all in Chinese. Of course, there have been very nice translations, but I want to read what's originally in Chinese and I promise you I'll do a review of the draft law. But apart from China, we have Thailand. So Sawadi Cup to all you people in Thailand and we are going to have for sure the PDPA Thailand that will be passed from 1st June this year uh, despite still being in pandemic for some of you who didn't know it was actually supposed to be passed last year in 2020 but the government postponed it a year so apart from China and Taiwan we also have our friends from Canada the PPDA is going to be renamed it's going to be renamed CC oops CPPA why do they have such similar names so it's called the it's going to be called CPPA and uh, not to be confused with CCPA because this is the consumer privacy protection act Yes, very similar to the CCPA, isn't it? So I just wish they just keep PPDA. I've been talking about PPDA for quite a while as well. And I thought that's a nice ring to the word PPDA. So goodbye PPDA and hello CPPA. And there's no Canada, is it? Anyway, so back to South Asia and we have our friends from Qatar who has also been updating their privacy laws. And so we see all over the world, countries have been uh, introducing their privacy laws. They have been uh, working hard to talk about cybersecurity and the need for data protection. So if you are going to be doing business, if your country has not started to implement laws yet, I really strongly urge you to, well, look at some of the guidelines in other countries probably the ones near your vicinity and well start complying and of course if you're going to do business with countries like Europe, US, Singapore uh, it's good to uh, get hold of some of the guidelines and also put them in place in some of your business processes and operations so something on the lighter side um, you know this surprised me when I saw this article uh, The Great Causes Daily I believe it is a Reader's Digest kind of a program because I have it on my Audible account because I listen to some of these lessons and I was quite glad to see this article on privacy so does this mean we get uh, lectures in schools about privacy in fact I would really love to see more lectures or lessons about privacy and data protection in institutions and I myself am advocating with the use of my data heist card game to advocate the importance of cyber hygiene for kids as young as 9, 8 years, eight years old because at this age kids are already using the internet, they are already online and they are even using it for study and research so I believe that education really should start really young, not just uh, in university, but also in the primary and elementary schools. So have you got your vaccine for COVID-19? Um, for me, I've not got my vaccine yet. I'm looking forward to getting it so that uh, we could possibly have some travel. Uh, however, recently there's been some bad news in Singapore and I really hope uh, this pandemic gets better. Yet with this thing called vaccine passports, uh, there's concerns over the privacy risk that it might bring uh, because there's so much information stored in God knows where, right? And is it the national government? Is it other governments? Is it a centralized database? We don't quite know how this data is being passed around, but we really should uh, 
take care of our own personal data and of course be aware of some of the risks that are involved. There's no way to eliminate all risks but really practice good cyber hygiene and be very vigilant at all times and do not let those hackers get the better of you. And the last article I have today, oh no, this is a penultimate article rather, it's uh, on Apple. Yes, I'm an Apple fan and I confess it and I'm still on the very old ancient iPhone 8 because I love the fingerprint thingy here. And well, it's now a privacy war and looks like Apple is using privacy as a feature for business dominance and branding. So let's see how this goes. And I'm going to spend some time to research on this. I just updated my phone OS as well. And I'll again do an update on this after I played with this new and updated OS. And finally, the very last article for today is driverless cars. And what do driverless cars have uh, in relation to privacy? Well, with cars being driverless, they will certainly be, be having a lot of cameras for checking and even surveillance and yes I mentioned a bad word called surveillance and in surveillance there are concerns I'm sure about privacy and data protection and just want to bring up this point that as the world is going towards uh, the use of robots in several functions uh, we really have to again uh, take note of privacy and for the designers and engineers who are developing this Please, please, please remember to apply privacy by design because it is so important to ensure that whatever solutions we build have privacy built in from day one and not have zero day errors. So my name is Mark Barnabas, your data protection pal. And really, I really hope that you have a great time. And remember, be safe and be good, be vigilant. And if you want to contact me, these are my social media cradles. Please contact me and feel free to subscribe and share. Oh yes, and yes, please subscribe and good day and goodbye.